Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, repetition is kind of inherent to comics um, on a number of different fronts, both in kind of the, the content of the comic itself, to how characters are leveraged, to ultimately kind of how people complain or compliment comics. Um, it, it dawned on me over the weekend that repetition is one of those things I've become personally very averse to. And it's it's good to know the things that are your uh, pet peeves, your irritations. It's, it's good to have a really clear grasp on that, especially if you're a retailer, because those are your blind spots. If you hate, you know, martial art type characters and just you never could get into them, you never liked them, that's fine. That's your personal preference. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're going to sell comics to people, if you're going to sell content to people, you need to make sure that you're aware of that blind spot and you're not you know, losing yourself a sale because, you know, you have a personal dislike against something. I think this is one of those very kind of simple truths that would be valuable for a lot of people in and out of comics to kind of recognize that the things they don't like, it's fine, acceptable for them not to like it. But they need to be careful about pushing those things they dislike onto other people because they're going to lose customers, they're going to lose market, or they're going to lose credibility, depending on if they're out making an argument. Um, comic books are kind of built to optimize around repetition. And, and what I mean by that is it's a, it's a quick business in the sense that you've got a monthly comic, you're just kind of cranking out volume. Um, and this is really what a lot of the publishers and frankly, more and more the indies are doing. It's, it's a numbers game where you're just trying to get out as much content as you can. So in a world where you're not, you know, print, you're not publishing millions of copies for every title, you start to get to this point where whatever works, even at a small level, you try and copy, clone, and repeat. And I think part of the problem, by the way, at least where you see this kind of coming across in, in U.S. Western comics, is your, your editorial to comic structure is pretty pretty broken, frankly. You've got uh, too few editors kind of paid too little with too little experience. Maybe the pay is, is somewhat irrelevant to this argument, but too little experience anyway. You have a lot of, I mean, there's a decent amount of editors that went straight from either working in a comic shop or, you know, working at Kinko's, uh, which is, which it was the previous job of one of these editors. And now they're, they're editing uh, multiple books, not, not two books, but maybe eight. And they are uh, typically not trained well. There's basic, you know, teaching. One of the most staggering things about doing some of the interviews of editorial uh, back in the 80s and the 90s was how much actual mentorship and training and how much of a community there was. And today, it's there's a lot less of that. It's not not zero, but but much less than there was. Uh, and, and there, I mean, you could argue there's not time, there's not funding, there's not, it's just for whatever reason, the training of editorial is lower. So what happens is you get a, you know, more or less untrained, fairly new person, not a lot of experience, overloaded with work, juggling kind of various pieces. And they don't, they, a lot of people today don't even have the benefit of longer runs. You know, we, we talk about how Longer comic runs are good for customers, good for creators, would be healthy. They're also good for editors because it provided a little bit more stability to their job. It allowed them to kind of plan out and, and structure things better. But when all of their comics as well are on a three to six month leash at best, um, it's it's chaos. It's It's going to be a lot of kind of pandemonium. So what happens is if anything seems to be working... You, you lump and swarm. Yeah, and this was the exact phrase that I've had described to me by editors at DC and, and some of Marvel of just, it's like lump and swarm, which just sounds very attractive and appealing. Uh, it's this kind of works, so let's just uh, keep doing it until it stops working. And when it stops working, then we'll move to the next thing that works. So as a, re as a, you know, as a result, you get a lot of repetition. And if you're somebody who reads a lot of comics, you start to notice the same things over and over and over again. And it's, it's dull. Uh, and, and yeah, there, there's all, this also occurs on the customer base where you see the same arguments used over and over and over and over again. And, you know, then you can get, you can go down the rabbit hole of our highly polarized nature of, of extremists and, and everything else. I mean, the, the comment section on my videos has started to become a dumpster fire in certain cases. There's some really good ones in there. And then there's just some uh, very knee-jerk kind of nonsense in there as well. And it's, But it's the same stuff. And I recognize, at least with me, doing these videos, doing these shows, um, I, 
I just get, I, I get discouraged and very tired very quickly when I see the same stuff over and over and over, whatever, whatever it is, it's the same kind of knee jerk comments. It's the same tropes in the comic book. It's the same. Uh, it's uh, just, it, you know, I, I like things to be new and different, all new, all different. That's, that's what I like, except not, not the all new, all different, which was really neither new or different uh, in a lot of ways. But it's, it's one of those cases where I think uh, comics has a certain level of impatience. I don't know how you, you tell this story, but if you, if you could take a longer view, if you could look at kind of the changes and the, you know, the character usage and how some of the, the promotions and other things were done, and you took a 50-year view of comics, what you would find is that the shifting and the changing and the, you know, the, the guest appearances and the, the hot-shotting of different events has got this escalating curve uh, up, especially in the last five to 10 years. What's happening is that there's a there's an increased level of impatience to kind of make a change or, or get some recognition or get some activity on a book. And so the, the tolerance for letting things just play out a little bit more organically, letting the characters and the storylines and everything else kind of settle and be certain, it's gone. And I, I can't help but see a parallel in some ways between kind of social media's general, uh, you know, you have to get somebody's attention today. And what we're outraged about, you know, yesterday is forgotten a week from now. This is kind of the, the, the crazy part about kind of this industry and, and how a lot of the, the conversation works these days is it's, it's a frantic conversation. I also can't help but, but think that uh, people are writing to this uh, short attention span crowd. And what we're seeing, or what, you know, the, the more and more as the results come in, we see that the, the crowd on social media that does have that kind of ADD short attention span make up a, a, just a tiny percentage of the actual comic market. So that, that to me leads me to believe that even more damage is being done and we don't completely recognize it. It's, it's you know, we're allowing uh, these storylines to play out over months like like can you imagine uh, there there were I'm trying to think of, of some of the the longer events it was not uncommon for comics to have a storyline play out over you know six months to a year what's kind of crazy do you remember the uh, the the irritation I think when Bendis in particular really started doing this right for the trade stuff and it's like hey this uh, I'm writing these six issue arcs well you'd get two of them a year right? Six issues, six issues, you'd get two of these arcs a year. That would be two trades. And today, I mean, I'm trying to think of the last event that went six months. Like nothing is really even allowed to go six months anymore. It's, it's over the course of one month. I mean, the, the Hellfire Gala is 12 issues in one month. The Ten of Swords further back was, uh, you, you know, came in under two months. Um, it's, it's, there's, and that was 24 issues. There, there's no, it, it's, everything is speeding up. And as a result, we're getting a lot of copying, cloning and repetition. And I think this is one area where as more, as comics get distributed, one, actually one of the places where this is really going to hit home and hurt is if you ever do get a, uh, kind of a shonen jump style, all you can eat, uh, you know, pay $2 and get all the comics and suddenly people start consuming a lot more. They start reading a lot more comics. Um, it's going to erode kind of a lot of the storylines because what's going to happen is you're going to see that, you know, first of all, things are kind of in this frantic pace. And second, there's just so much that is being copied and cloned. And I think that's going to hurt the overall business. I don't know. I, I also I can't help but think that's a little bit of why the indie market is doing better at the moment or why it's growing is because, you know, for better or worse, a lot of indie comics are new. They're, they're different stories, uh, either different characters, same kind of general plot, or completely different plot, different genre. And I think that people are responding to that because they've, they've read some of this stuff over and over and over and over again. And it's, uh, I don't know, I, I think that's, that's a definite factor in why you're seeing that growth. I also think that's why you see some of the indie comics that get popular and stay popular are from creators who are you know, uh, they're not necessarily the big names coming over from Marvel and DC and trying their own thing. They're people who are 
uh, actually bringing completely new and different ideas to the table. And I think that's that's a factor as well. But anyway, repetition kills me. It kills me with uh, comics. It kills me with comments. So, like, uh, you know, I, I just the, the drudgery of going through kind of the same thing over and over and over again. I, I'm out. I'd rather not. <laughs> but but it has been a part of comics for a long time, just increasingly a bigger part of comics. Anyway, maybe I'm off base. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I will. I'll read them. Yes, I will. Just I promise. <laughs> like and subscribe and thanks for listening.